Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl, Steph. I'm chilling here with my man, Hungs. And we are Land Lovers. And this is Land the Lovers Uncut. Bam, 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 bam. Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for clicking on this video. That means we had a great thumbnail and a great title, right? <laughs> but please stick around for the whole video. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for the algorithm. You know what it is. So let's get right into it because it's time we put these people on blast. Worst dating experience ever. Boom. Period. This has been in my heart for a while now and I'm about to let it out. Facts. Best believe. So if you were dating me at any point in my life and you... <laughs> wow, that was a lot. Was it? That was a lot and it was a lot of anger. Mm. So after this video, we really need to talk about if you want to talk. Okay. Today's story time, because we know you guys love some story time, um, is... The worst dating experience. Disclaimer, we will not be mentioning names. Yo, I'm a, I'm about to let it in. <laughs> I can't. I don't have the energy to match <laughs> yeah. all of this right now. No, but on the real though, um, I think my worst dating experience will have to be my high school dating experience. Yo, Shem, guys. Hey, Wang Lala Ngati. Yo! Yeah, it was quite an experience because like I was not well versed in the relationship game and all of that. I'm what people would say a late bloomer, right? So she was a little more experienced than I was at the time. Wait, what? Like way in high school were you here? Like matric? No, this, we started dating when I was in grade 10. Okay. So I was 16. Aww. So 2010 was World Cup, right? Mm. And World Cup was in South Africa. For those of you who don't know, the FIFA World Cup, Soccer World Cup. And um, the finals were happening on the, I think, 11th of July or, or some date close to that. Um, and at my school, we had a, like a, what's it called? Where they have the screen and you can come and watch like mm. a, a, a viewing park or whatever the case might be. Um, and I had asked if I can go and attend. And then I don't know what was happening. I think it, either the weather was too cold or something, but I ended up not going. Um, but she went. Ah, uh, jiggy jiggy. Then we're back at school. Um, whether it was the following week or a few weeks later, whatever the case might be. And there's this friend of mine and he's just like, yo bro, I need to tell you something. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And he's like, Ish, but I'm not sure if I should. I'm like, how? You started, just finish what you started. And shout out, I'm not going to mention his name also because maybe, I don't know if she even watches our channel or not, but I don't, yeah. Anyways. Anyways. So, <laughs> so then he tells me by his locker, he's like, yo, bro, like, I saw your girl um, kissing this other gent. And this other gent was a matric student at the time at school. And like, we didn't be for anything, but we knew each other. So I'm like, oh, really? Is that so? like yeah like i'm not telling you because i'm like trying to be like spicy or anything like that i just thought like bro to bro like you should know I'm like all right cool bet then um i confronted her about it and she tried to play the whole like you know uh, uh, uh. but like your boy had the facts you know um even like the location where it happened what she was wearing what he was wearing everything and then she confessed to it and we broke up um, right then and there. And then like not even four weeks later, your boy was like, yeah, okay, cool. Now I'll take you back. I accept your apology. And like, we can work things out. Whipped. Whipped, bro. Whipped. Whipped. And like, this was like my first time being like heartbroken. And like, it broke me. But then Sharp got back together and like, Thought, okay cool now that maybe she realizes like how much i actually care we can you know work past this and then you know we'll become high school sweetheart that same year december ah Miguel decides she's down in hey let me not distill locations <laughs> she's down in wherever she was <laughs> having a holiday with her family um and in south africa during december obviously we go on holiday so we're on holiday and then 
something goes down but i don't know about it until we get back to school the following year so now i'm in grade 11 i'm in a little bit of a senior position i've got a certain like role that i'm playing i'm head of this and all of that so like you know i'm feeling fresh for the year mm -hmm. ah then they rock me with these news and the way these news came about so i was in boarding school so now everyone in the it's it felt like everyone in the boarding house in both my house and the other house because we had two two hostels it felt like everyone knew because <laughs> like when we go for breakfast for yeah. lunch for for dinner everyone like is like skinnering and like they look at me but they don't really say what's going mm. on so then eventually i was like yo like what, what like what's going on like people are talking about something that i don't know but yeah. it feels like i'm involved uh eventually she then confessed ah uh, bruh I'm like, woman, <laughs> after, and then. So like this time I was like proper, proper, proper broken. Uh, it like, it, it messed me up for a good while. We broke up again. Yeah, we got back together again. Uh, don't ask me why, don't ask me how, um, but we got back together. Teenage love, guys. Teenage yeah, love. Yeah, honestly, it was just, it was raucous, man. And we got back together and at this point in time, to be fair, she did like change her ways, but I was really not in it. Um, yeah. And I don't know why I went back. Um, I think I thought I couldn't leave. I don't know why. But yeah, I wasn't in it and emotionally, mentally, like I was just not invested as, as I was before. And the reason why this was my worst dating experience was because it really put like a lot of insecurities um, on top of who I was at the time and even furthermore, you know, because now getting into relationships thereafter was like I was always concerned or worried about this happening again, but also like what was wrong with me for it to happen twice, you know, with the same person, even though like I poured out, poured out what I thought was love and affection and all of that stuff. But maybe the ways in which we receive and give love are not necessarily the way uh, we can make excuses for it. But nonetheless, she rocked my world. And um, it's so funny, though, before yo. I get to my story, like looking back now, I mean, at 16 and 17, we think not to say i'm not yeah, downplaying no, the heartbreak heartbreak yeah. is heartbreak you know but we're so young at the time but it's as if our entire world is crumbling. is crumbling and coming to an end and i think now being older like when our parents and older people used to be like yeah. ah you'll be you'll fine, be fine yeah. it's young you know in retrospect i see what they now see you know looking <laughs> back now even if my you know nieces and nephews at 16 i'm like ah you mm. fine. <laughs> you know, it's life. You'll be yeah. fine. So my worst dating experience is... All of them, because I wasn't the one. I'm joking. Yo, you're on a roll and you're making me tired <laughs> to even talk. Oh my gosh. Um, so mine is out of high school. Hey, even after varsity. So, huh. no, was it after varsity or during varsity? Anyway, timeline memory is a bit out. So my worst dating experience is this. So I uh, started chatting to this guy mm. who I knew from previous life of school. Mm. And so we started chatting, you know, everything was good. Like, but he stayed in a different province. I will mention the province. So he stayed in a different Isn't province. This? <laughs> I did rock it. So he stayed in a different province. Um, I think at this time I had just ended quite a, a serious relationship I was in and had mm. been in for a minute. Not I just ended it, but I did, so I wasn't like, like I was looking for like a serious relationship, but also not like two. So it was fine that he was in a different mm. province. So we're chatting, hey, we're chatting. you know that when you start chatting to someone and you chat like every day, the whole mm. day. Was this BBM times? Oh, no, no. Mix it. No, WhatsApp. Oh. It was not so court, long court. ago. Not so long ago. <laughs> it was long ago, but not so long ago. Mm. Anyway, so we chat in, everything, whatever, great, fantastic, cool stuff. And we'd been chatting for a while. So it was like a couple of months. Mm. And we're supposed to meet up. And we hadn't, I don't think we, I, I, it's 
blurry but i don't know i can't remember if we we met up prior to that but we could have when he came up to Joburg. yes mm. i think we had met like once in Joburg. went on a date lovely date ah mm. bliss 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 mm. i'm smiling mm. huh? i'm like i ah, know maybe this guy actually you know mm. is the one and then me uh, it wasn't one day we, we must talk last actually <laughs> because our situation was weeks so please <laughs> So carry on speaking and all that kind of stuff and then um, grow quite like close. So technically I think we were dating, but I don't, it, you know one of those things where you don't know if you're dating, yeah. it's like a situationship. Yeah. It's not like made very clear that you are dating or mm. are you just seeing each other or what's also happening. There's no labels. There's no labels, which is dangerous guys. Put a label to things because it's there's no labels that allows for sneaky behavior. Mm. Anyway. Because you don't know people's intentions. Yeah. So I decide, no, we decide <laughs> actually that, you know, we need to meet up again. But mm. this time I'll come to him. Mm. I decide in my infinite wisdom of mm. life, no, it's fine. I'll book a flight, mm. book a ticket mm. and I'll go down and I'll sort of spend the weekend mm. down in this province, the specific province. Mm. Yeah. This time I like where, like I was, I was working, <laughs> but I had a very, very tight budget, like mm. super, super tight budget. You know, when, like I say, my when my expenses go up, there's not much left. So mm. I even saved for this flight mm. ticket as well as accommodation because I am not trying to like, so I was like, let me make a plan to, you know, mm. make sure I have accommodation for the weekend and my flight there and back. Mm. Hi. I was very honest. I've always been honest. I tell brother, this mm. guy. So this is, the money i have and this is what i'm booking and stuff mm. the rest i don't have like I literally i was gonna come back and see to finish i was going yeah. to i was not i had no money mm. no when i say no money guys i'm not talking about 100 i had no money left in my account i maxed out yeah so he's like no don't worry you know I when you're you. here i got you blah, blah blah take care of food what transports where we going mm. are we speaking we planning the situation Bear in mind this time I'm still staying by myself. Mm. Yeah. So cupboards are bare, guys. It's empty. Fridge. Fridge and empty. The light is light. bright. <laughs> but I'm going to meet this guy. <clears throat> A whole flight. So on my way to the airport, mm. I call him. I'm like, listen, I send him my flight information. I'm like, mm. I'm boarding. This is when my flight will be arriving. Mm. Where should I meet you? Hi no shop guy says meet me here mm. i'll be leaving work and then i'll come pick you up mm. okay great fly ah, ah even in the sky i'm also in the sky i'm thinking i'm about to have a lovely cloud nine lovely weekend and then i arrive at this airport <laughs> meanwhile guys also it's a province i'm so not familiar with mm. just by the way side note I also want to side note that I have family everywhere, but it's the one province I have no family in. <laughs> I don't even have friends in this province. Anyway, land at uh, the airport. I phone this guy. The guy's phone is off. Do, lo, lo, next. Mm. His phone is off. Like, no, maybe it's just next or whatever. Hey, go get my luggage, whatever. Go to the meeting point where he said we must meet. I'm sitting on a bench with my bag. Mm. I'm phoning. Ah. I'm phoning 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, mm. an hour, I'm calling this guy, his phone is off. Mind you, he knows what time mm. he's... <laughs> guys, so, here's where the story gets worse. I'm sitting there, I need to get to where I need to go, where I've booked my accommodation. Mm and traffic and all that stuff. And I took a late flight because I had to go after work. Mm. So I need to go and check in also before a certain time. Mm. And it's a little bit of a distance, about 45 minutes out from the airport. Mm. And I kid you not, guys, I remember to this day, I had 400 Rand. This is what I had mm. in the form of money. Mm. I had 400 Rand. There's no decision. Uber at that there's, time. There's no Uber. No. Taxi cabs. But there was a cab. Yeah. Hey, I get this guy this and i know it's going to be obviously it's a cab it's going to be way more than 400 rand because mm. it's far hey i confidently get into the cab and it's one of those cabs where the meters like running mm. we didn't even leave the airport yet we already like on 70 rand i'm like mm. 
it's the admission cost i don't say anything and it's this very old like you know friendly guys making mm. conversation and stuff like that guys i am emotional as can be i don't even know what i can't even go change my ticket because i'll need money to change the ticket i'm not trying to phone anyone back home because the stories i've even told my friends as to where i am is another story because i didn't want them to really know that i was going you know because i hadn't thought it was a good idea in any case the few that i told so i said i'm not going so now it's lies and everything in between i'm checking on my thingy how far we are we're like 25 minutes out we're on like 500 rand already i'm like wow so eventually we get to the thing Mm. And the thing is like 700 and something rand. Mm. Then and there, as that guy stopped, mm. I burst out crying. <laughs> oh, I started crying. I'm like... No! Mm. <laughs> I was supposed to... This poor guy, I told him my whole drama. I was supposed to meet this guy and he was supposed to pick me up and he's ghosted me and I don't know what to do because I have no money and this is all I have. I'm like crying. I'm like, and I'm saying to him, and I can't phone anyone back at home. I don't know anyone here. This poor guy, God help me. He felt so sorry for me. He was like, it's fine. Just bring that small monies, mm. what, 400 or whatever. And you can go. So I'm like, thank you, thank you. I just make it in time to check in. Fortunately, I had paid online and whatever. Mm -hmm. Guys, I had an eaten since breakfast. Do you know what is real life hunger? Pains. Mm. I am so hungry. I'm still phoning this guy. This guy's phone is off. Mm. It's like in the evening. I'm still trying. I'm still trying. Yeah. I get to this place. There's even a balcony. Hey, I'm feeling sorry for myself the way I'm crying. I've got no money. You know those biscuits, those complimentary biscuits they give you? Next to the teacup. Next to the teacup. Mm. I had that and tea. I phoned this guy until like 11 o'clock at night. This guy ghosted me. So, hey. Next morning is now Saturday. I'm only flying out Sunday. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Mm. You would think at this point, you'd be like, call your parents, call someone, tell them to send you money so that mm. you can eat. Not me. Because guys, you know how um, embarrassed I was? Like, it was embarrassment. It was like, why am I, so, how was I so foolish, you know, to... Mm fall for this kind of a thing how has this even happened i don't even know where to start explaining so i said i'm not calling anyone it's like such a last resort stop it get some help so i remember there's this i won't call name the thing but there was this thing where you could get money um you could just literally use your phone i'm not gonna call what the thing was maybe you wouldn't have known because you would have never needed it but it was a lending <laughs> A lending thing but very small amounts those of you who know you could only borrow but you could get the money immediately into your account mm. and then um you, obviously there's interest but it's like small amounts like 200 rand or 300 rand or something mm. like that and depending on how much you qualify for so i go onto this um what what dot com <laughs> people will know what it is i promise you guys are gonna know and i qualify for like 200 bucks mm. hey 200 bucks comes through mm. at least so i go I'm sparingly buying there at the supermarket just like literally bread. Like, guys, it was horrible. And I'm in this beautiful province. I go to the beach. I went to the beach by myself because where I stayed was like opposite the beach. Mm. I'm sitting there on the sand looking out into the ocean. I am crying. I have no money. I'm still hungry. I have no friends. I know nobody here, right? Mm. There's no way I can also make it back to the airport. Because how am I supposed to make it back to the airport? Mm. So I start asking the locals there, like, what taxis do you take to go to the airport? Because mm. I'm thinking, hey, push comes to shove, I must get local with this last hundred rand I have. Mm. Even the taxis are expensive because I must take a taxi into town, from town I must take. I don't, I can't even make it back to the airport. Eventually, guys, long story short, this guy contacts me Saturday, I think it was afternoon tells me some story about a funeral i don't even know what story this guy I can't remember but some story my question is okay. why do men lie so much guys you know as angry as i was then and there i literally had to make peace forgive him because i needed him to take me to the airport mm. on sunday mm. so that i can go home mm. so he's like i'm gonna come through i'm gonna come see you now uh, i'm like 
yeah, please, man, whatever, please come through. And then he actually does come through and we spend the day together. Guys, you know how, how, how strong I had to act? Fine. Because I was not trying to piss this guy off. I'm like, if you left me alone, like knowing I had no money, you're going to mm. leave me here and then how am I supposed to go back mm. home? So, yeah, so I was friendly, friendly with him. Nice, nice, everything, mm. lovey-dovey. Yes, hey, mm. worst thing of my life. Mm. And then Sunday morning, flight, even bought me lunch there at the airport. I'd never been so hungry in my life, my gosh. And then boarded my plane and came back home. And I was in shock Mm. because now I came home to an empty fridge and and no petrol in my car. Mm. Mm. I don't have flights. I went to my parents to go do grocery shopping until the end of the month. Mm. That's my worst dating experience. It was horrible. It was traumatizing, guys. And you know what was worse after that? We still carried on chatting. Just like uh, foolishness. We still carried on chatting. Uh, uh, but in my mind, I was like, there's not going to go anywhere. But we still mm. carried on chatting. And he was so, like, I don't know if it's like possessive and jealous about certain stuff. Even mm. though you're the one who ghosted me and things. Anyway, then we, we cut ties. Some two years later or something like that, he sent me an apology email. He found Jesus and he understands what he did to me was wrong. He just wants forgiveness. Mm. I released the guy because I was like, I'm sure that thing is eating you up because you you left me. Mm. Imagine Mm. to fend for myself Mm. in a place you know is foreign to me. Mm. That's my worst dating experience. I think it trumps yours. I don't think so. Comment down below whose who's, story is worst. Who's had the worst dating experience, guys? And if you relate to any of our stories, also please make sure you comment down below. Hey guys, dating can be a trap. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We are the Endlovers and thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. We out. Bye. Don't do it. <laughs> Never meet any guy anyway. For whatever reason, Mm. don't do it. In fact, that's not even the point. Uh. Don't do it without having money. Guys, you know, if if only I had money, Mm. I'd have booked myself into, I would have made a holiday, a Mm. solo holiday of it. I would have enjoyed myself. And even when he called you, you would have said, no, it's fine. No, it's fine, dude. Mm. It's fine. Mm. You know what It's like, I don't need you. I don't need you. Mm. Hi, even that place I was staying, you know, they had such nice, you know, I was walking past the breakfast buffet. (laughs) Oh, it was so sad. People are eating eggs benedict and what, what. I had a biscuit the day before. Mm. Like, oh. And I'm sure you were sucking on it just so it can oh, last longer. Oh, guys. You know when you reuse a tea bag because it was one of those dingy places mm. that only gave you one tea bag because it's a one bedroom. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. And I reused the tea bag the morning to I have tea. using is not a problem. Dude. It was such weak, weak, weak tea. Mm. Then I must go downstairs. People are having buffets. Hey. Mm. Look at you now. Look at me now. Mm. And the, I, I wonder even if these people were. I, I, I hope they don't watch the channel because it's a bit awkward. I'm sure they'll be able to put two and two together. Ah, whether you watch or you don't watch. In fact, I hope you watch. Make sure you're part of the gang. You know, we <laughs> need the numbers. We appreciate you. Thanks for the life lessons. You know, we're doing much better now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, we out here going for counseling and <laughs> therapy. <laughs> I'm joking. No, but for real. <laughs> um, Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>